Hi everyone from uh, ACR Convergence 2020. This is Dr. Robert Chow coming to you live uh, from Room Now. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, specifically enthesitis uh, and enthesitis and psoriatic arthritis. Um, as you know, enthesitis can be difficult to diagnose and assess. Uh, we're sort of used to the old, but some would say tried and true method of poking at an enthesis point and simply asking if it hurts. Uh, the problem though lies in a few things. Um, number one is how accurate that uh, method really is. And especially in the smaller thesis points, unlike the Achilles, uh, for example. And number two, uh, there's been a rise of musculoskeletal ultrasounds, uh, which actually provides us with much more objective data. Uh, and it's really useful, especially in patients with subclinical disease. And number three, uh, evaluating enthesitis objectively can be very helpful for us in rheumatology, especially with our patients who have uh, concurrent pain syndromes such as fibromyalgia. So I wanted to share with you a few abstracts today uh, dealing with uh, enthesitis in particular. Uh, the first one's 1853. Uh, this was a pretty interesting uh, abstract in the gut microbiome uh, and differences in that in, in patients with axial spinal arthritis. Uh, they had 33 patients, and they found some significant differences overall in the gut microbiome and patients with AXPA versus healthy. Also found differences in inactive uh, patients, uh, AXPA patients versus active. And very interestingly, also uh, gut microbiome differences in patients with enthesitis and also radiographic versus non-radiographic AXPA. I think uh, it's very interesting data, very useful data. Uh, but it continues to beg the question, um, what do we do about the microbiome? You know, is this something we can target? Um, because already some studies have shown that diet alone uh, does not change the diversity of the gut microbiome. Uh, the next abstract is 1552. Uh, this is a study showing improvements in ultrasound enthesitis uh, with biologic DMARD treatments. Um, had about 25 patients. Uh, with active disease who are either starting or switching biologic DMARDs, and the ultrasound of the enthesis were performed at baseline three months and six months. Um, results show there was improvement of ultrasound enthesitis at those time periods, um, and the clinical activity outcomes were associated with the decrease in enthesitis counts. I think uh, studies like this continue to show the validity of uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound, especially in our everyday use. Um, the next study is 1543. Uh, this is very interesting. It showed the importance of ultrasound uh, in our pediatric population. Uh, this is one of the first studies to evaluate uh, joints and enthesis in that population. And this was in children with psoriasis. Um, this, this had 49 patients. And the ultrasound abnormalities were uh, higher in the symptomatic group, in the, in, especially in the synovitis enthesitis. They found a difference of 77% versus 39%. Um, and it was also, they found very useful in, in the detection of subclinical involvement. And lastly, uh, was actually an oral presentation by Dr. Eder. Uh, this was abstract zero, uh, 2021. And this was a duet study which is a novel sonographic scoring system for enthesitis uh, to help with psoriatic arthritis diagnosis. Um, this focused on scoring with the following uh, factors at 16 sites, um, and it included hypoechogenicity, hypo erosions, uh, thickening of the enthesis, Doppler signal, uh, bursitis, enthesophytes, and calcifications. Um, overall, there was good agreement uh, between sonographers. Uh, the thickness measurement and total score showed a uh, good interrater uh, agreement. The lowest agreement was for uh, hypoechogenicity and thickening, uh, which kind of varied by site. Um, I think overall, these were very promising studies, um, especially for the evaluation of enthesitis. Uh, I think as we know more about the evaluation, the recognition and diagnosis of enthesitis, uh, in an objective matter, especially with real-time, um, you know, objective data with uh, radiographic evidence. Um, this will be very useful for us and very pragmatic for the rheumatologist who, who is treating the uh, psoriatic arthritis patient. So thank you very much for tuning in. Again, this is Dr. Robert Chow coming to you from Room Now uh, at ACR Convergence 2020. And uh, please follow Room Now for coverage of ACR 2020 and follow me on Twitter at Dr. RBC. Thanks.